I enjoy finding anime that aren't very popular but are able to stand out as great examples of storytelling. Sometimes I hear about these shows from friends or anime viewers or just browsing the internet. Knowing I first saw on TV tropes and was instantly intrigued. I saw it was about time travel, parallel dimensions, and it looked like a lost of innocence type of story and well, I just loved those. So yes, I was interested in knowing. Sadly, it took me a while to finally watch it, as I kept finding other shows I really wanted to watch instead, like Fate Zero, Penguin Drum, Black Bullet. Some of those were better ideas than others, but yes. I finally finished it, so decided to make a review of it, after making like three other reviews, because that's how knowing has worked for me. Anyway, moving on to the story. The story of knowing is about a war that spans multiple dimensions, with a focus on what I will call Earth and a world called Lacrima. The Crema is a world 15 years farther along than Earth on the verge of destruction. Several soldiers from Lacrima have come to Earth to capture our main character Haruka, who unbeknownst to her has the power of the Dragon Tour, creating her power over time and space. Because of this, if Lacrima can capture her, they can save their world. Looking past all the science fiction and parallel dimensions and so on, you have really what's a traditional action show in the series. A kid with some type of powers, a world in jeopardy, and a lot of themes of hope and friendship that feel like something out of Naruto. At this point, I would like to say that this is only the beginning, that there's something much more here, but sadly, there's not. It's not a bad thing, I mean, as there's a degree of tension throughout and I found the story interesting. There's also some good surprises, and it's able to use its science fiction backdrop to offer some really unique plot points, but it wasn't anything all that spectacular or amazing either. And unfortunately, there are a few problems with the story as a whole. While they do try to justify the science fiction elements with actual science, like with quantum mechanics and so forth, there are too many leaps for it to really work well. It does do a better job of other shows like Steins Gate do here, but still, it was something that bugged me. There are also a few characters whose actions really just don't make any sense at times, or they do something just because the plot needs it. The story does get bogged down with some size of life moments too when they really did not feel that they were needed. Now this did make sense at first, we want to see the everyday lives of these kids before everything goes wrong, but when their lives have been in jeopardy multiple times over the past ever how long the story took to tell, it really does seem silly to care about a crush a guy has on a girl. With all these problems, no, it wasn't as good as it could have been, nor as good as I had hoped. Even so, it was an interesting story from beginning to end, and I was able to look past most of these faults for the most part. On their own, the characters here are not anything special. They may have a little bit more to them than just a single cliché, but not by a whole lot. Haruka is a spunky girl who has a simple mindset for all these strange things that are going on around her. You also have Yu, who is under a lot of pressure to do well in school, and well, he's kind of an emo kid if you want to look at him that way, so yeah. You also have Karasu, who is a soldier from Lacrima, and he is just awesome, because he's voiced by Chrisman Freeman, and that's really all you need to be awesome, but even if that wasn't all you needed, he'd still be a great character. But what really makes the characters interesting here is how we see multiple versions of them and how time and different events change them. Yu is handled especially well here. We see all the what ifs and what could have been for them and how they handle life's struggles, both of their everyday life and also more of the supernatural side of things. This is something I thought was really cool, is instead of learning about them by seeing their past, we see their future, or at least some possible futures. I do wish some of the side characters had a bit more of a purpose other than just running out Harkus group of friends, but in that role they weren't bad and got the job done. Animation-wise, the thing that stands out most about the show is its use of CG. Now, before you run away and panic, the CG was used well, though it does take a little bit of getting used to. The special effects when the dimensions of warp was really colorful and cool, but beyond this, there isn't anything overly good or bad about the animation, so it's okay. The music, again, I don't have a lot to say about it. It did its job during the show, but it's not really memorable, and I can't think of any songs off the top of my head. The opening was similar. It was kind of cool, I guess, but still, the song was kind of dull, and the visuals were decent at best. Again, not bad, but nothing that great. The English dub zone. Now, this is an interesting point. First of all, some performances were better than others. Haruka's voice actor, I just really didn't care for. Conversely, we have Crispin Freeman and Yuri Lowenthal as Karasu and Yu, and they are both great. So the good and bad do balance out with the good, I'd say slightly outweighing the bad. The rest of the voice actors were all decent to okay, nothing that great or bad. The problem I had with the dub was not the voice actors, though. It was the dialogue itself. The problem I had with the dub was not the voice actors. They were okay as a whole. It was the dialogue itself. There are some lines that just really felt off at times. It felt like they just weren't seeing what it made sense for them to say then. It could be the translator's fault, but when I switched to the sub, there was a similar problem here. And it wasn't like I was watching fan subs, I was watching the actual DVDs. And beyond the script, there's also the issue that the four sectors cannot agree how to pronounce Haruka's name. They do make fun of this during the bloopers, though. That was good. What is it? 
Haruka. Haruka? No, Haruka, dumbass. But really, if you're going to change the character's name from Japanese and English, okay, I get why you're doing that. It's kind of annoying, but not a huge deal. But if you're going to change her name from one thing to another, keep it consistent with all your voice actors. Otherwise, it just sounds stupid when one person is calling her Haruka, the other one's calling her Haruka, and just pick one, stay with it, and you'd be good. As a whole, though, I would still probably recommend the English just because I like English dubs in general, so go with that if you like English dubs, otherwise the Japanese, go with that. Moving on to my final thoughts here. Knowing is a good show. It's not great or amazing, but it does offer an interesting look at time travel. The story was gripping, and the highlights are the multiple angles it's able to explore its characters with. Yes, there are some problems that I've talked about, but none of them are so great that it drags down the story. So let us move on to the final score. After doing things with numbers and categories and some math in an Excel document, I've decided to give Knowing a total score of a 6.89 out of 10 and a rating of worth watching. If you're looking for similar shows to Knowing, there's actually not all that much I can think of. The clear recommendation would be Steins Gate, of course, because it's also about time travel, but other than that, those two shows are quite different, though Steins Gate is good, so go check that out. As for another recommendation, one that I would think of would be Naruto because of some similar things with the theme exploration, but at the same time Naruto is 600 episodes long and really not that great for me to recommend, so I can't get put that there. So instead, I'm going to recommend Mararu Penguin Drum. There's some similar themes about fate, trying to fight against it, and seeing what you can do there, and there's also the fact that both shows have cute animals. Knowing has Baron the Fluffy Dog, and Penguin Drum has penguins, and penguins are awesome. So yeah, go check out Penguin Drum, even if that recommendation really didn't make any sense, because the show doesn't always make sense, and that's why it's good. So yeah, that wraps up for me today. Thank you very much for watching, and I will talk to you next time.